Hi students, hope you are doing well. Today we begin lecture 52 in our course on aerospace engineering. And today I'm going to start a qualitative explanation of the airplane longitudinal static stability. In the next lecture, I'm going to look at the quantitative explanation, but today we are going to rely less on formulas and more on physical intuition. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, one of the questions we are going to answer today is why is there a horizontal tail in an aircraft? So if you see a typical aircraft, of course, you know the fuselage is to carry any people, any payload and so on. The wings are there to generate lift. And you need to ask the question, why exactly do we have the horizontal tail? So of course, today we are going to explain that this tail is something which is required for longitudinal static stability. And this is a very important aspect of the aircraft stability and control system. So let us look at the aircraft and some of the forces and moments which act on it. So if we look at a typical aircraft, we have the wing and we have the horizontal tail here. Now the wing produces a lift and a drag. The horizontal tail largely produces the lift. The drag is very small here. We're going to neglect that. There is the CG of the aircraft. The weight acts at the CG. And then there is a moment at the aircraft wing. This moment is given by MAC. It acts at the aerodynamic center of the wing section here. There is also a thrust which is acting forward in the aircraft. So essentially we see that we can take all these forces and we can take the moment which acts about the CG. This is something very important because it's going to help us to trim the aircraft. Now do remember that the weight acts at the CG so that's not going to take a part in the moment calculation but all these remaining forces are going to be important for the moment. Now, beside the wing and the horizontal tail itself, the CMCG also depends on the aerodynamic forces and moment which act on the fuselage, the engine nacelles, and so on. So we are going to just assume that we are able to somehow calculate this total MCG, and then we are able to get the coefficient for the moment. So CMCG is obtained by dividing MCG by Q infinity S into C, Q infinity is the dynamic pressure, that is half rho V square. S is the area of the wing and C is the chord of the wing. So do remember that from our previous discussions. So when we discuss about a trimmed condition, let us consider the situation where the airplane is trimmed in pitch. And this is the situation where MCG is zero or CMCG is zero. So this is the trimmed or the equilibrium condition of the aircraft here. So essentially all the forces which act on the aircraft, what would happen is that if we take the moment about the CG, this moment should be equal to zero. Now, before we move forward, we are going to define a certain variation in terms of alpha or the angle of attack. Now, if we go back to our definitions, we will see that in case of a typical cambered airfoil section, like the one I have shown here in yellow, you have a zero lift line and you have a chord line. So typically, the airplane alpha value is calculated with respect to the chord line and the angle between the chord line and the zero lift line is alpha subscript L equal to zero. So if we were to plot CL versus alpha, for example, for a cambered airfoil, you get this curve, which I have shown in red here. And this distance here is alpha L equal to zero. So essentially this is a value at which the CL hits the zero point here. So that's the particular zero lift line definition. So now what we are going to do is we are going to redefine the angle alpha in the next slide. So this is something which is known as the absolute angle of attack or it's given by the symbol alpha subscript A. So essentially what we have is alpha is the geometric value of alpha. So this is essentially the angle between the horizontal here and the chord line. So I have shown all that in blue here. That's the alpha value which we typically use. 
Now, if we consider alpha A, alpha A is essentially between the horizontal and the zero lift line. And so you can see here from geometry that alpha A is alpha plus alpha L equal to zero. So essentially you need to add this geometric angle with the zero lift angle to get this absolute angle, which is alpha subscript A. Now, one of the advantages of dealing with alpha subscript A is that if we were to plot CL with respect to alpha subscript A, we would get the lift curve such that it essentially goes through this zero point here. So essentially, when alpha A equals zero, lift would be zero or CL would be zero. And this is true for any gamebird airfoil in general. So typically, when we talk about aircraft stability and control, we often use alpha A and we do not use alpha. So this helps us to get rid of this particular alpha L equal to zero value because we are all the time simply dealing with the zero lift line here. So now let us think about longitudinal static stability. So let us consider a rigid airplane with fixed control. So fixed controls essentially here means that the elevators are fixed. Remember, we are only dealing with the pitching motion here. And what we do is we would test this airplane in free flight and measure MCG at different alpha A values. So in that case, if we were to plot all this data, we would see that a straight line would be a pretty good fit of this data. And so it's a linear variation. And then we would get a line something like this I've shown here in the red line here. So this is essentially the plot of CMCG versus alpha A. CMCG, remember, is the CM value about the center of gravity of the aircraft. This is the positive side of the graph. This is the negative side of the graph. So now what happens is that you start with this CM0 value, which must be positive, And then it goes down here. It hits some point here where CMCG is 0. That's the trim condition. So essentially here, alpha A equals alpha subscript E. So that stands for equilibrium. At this point, CMCG is 0 and then you continue further down here. You also see that the slope of this line, which is given by the partial derivative dcmcg by d alpha a is actually negative because the slope is like this here. So these are certain characteristics which are present in a typical aircraft and we are going to discuss the reason why this is necessary. So let's first define the equilibrium condition. So let's assume the airplane is flying along and you have a velocity coming from front at V infinity and then you have alpha A equals alpha E. So that's the value here. So essentially the alpha value is at the equilibrium value and in this condition CMCG would be zero. So that's what I have shown here. So this is the trimmed flight condition or the equilibrium condition of the aircraft. Now let us say that this aircraft got hit by some disturbance. Maybe it's got hit by a gust. And so it essentially moves up beyond this value here. So essentially what happens is that alpha A is greater than alpha E now. So you can see here that the angle has become greater than what I showed in the previous slide. And therefore what has happened is that you are at this location here. So if you look at this graph carefully, this is the alpha E point. And so alpha A is greater than alpha E. So you have a negative CMCG here and the negative CMCG would create a restoring moment. So remember that this kind of moment is essentially negative. It's a restoring moment. And this is going to try to bring the aircraft back to the equilibrium position, which is something we want to do for static stability. So the initial tendency of this aircraft is to try to return back to its starting position. And that happens because of the shape or the direction of this line here. Now let's consider the second condition that the aircraft is pitched down because of some disturbance. And so what happens here is that alpha A is less than alpha E. So in this case, what you have is you are in this region of the CMCG alpha A curve. So here you can see that in these regions, alpha A is less than alpha E here in any of these points. So in these points, what happens? CMCG is positive. So there is a 
positive restoring moment which acts in this direction and this will try to bring the aircraft back to the equilibrium position here so that's the thing you want of course you want the aircraft to go back to the equilibrium position so that you have static stability in this problem so essentially this gives us a qualitative understanding about why this particular shape of the graph is required in terms of cm cg versus alpha a the airplane in that case would have the initial tendency to return to its equilibrium position and therefore it would be statically stable so we see two things are necessary here one is that cm0 is greater than 0 so we see here we are starting from some region here where cm0 is a positive value also we see that the slope of this curve should be negative so this is the kind of direction of the curve which you have now this type of condition is known as stick fixed stability because here the elevator is fixed and that's something related to the stick being fixed also now what would happen if you have an unstable aircraft if you had an unstable situation a statically unstable situation then the graph could be something like this for example so here you see that cm0 is a negative value and also the slope is positive here so in this case what would happen is that instead of getting those restoring moments which we were getting in the previous discussion we would get moments which would essentially amplify the motion caused by the disturbance and that is of course deleterious behavior you do not want to have that kind of situation so let's look at some more aspects which are involved here one of the things is that the alpha a value should be within the flight range for the aircraft to be trimmed for example typically the maximum value of alpha a would take place when you are flying at a very low speed for example the stall speed this would be the lowest speed with which you can fly the aircraft and alpha a would be a minimum value when velocity is very high so you would be flying at v max here so essentially you need to function within this bound of the minimum and maximum value of alpha and when you do that you have essentially what is known as a longitudinally balanced aircraft so that would be something where alpha a will be in the flight range of the aircraft and therefore you can actually trim the aircraft here that's important that you do achieve a trim condition now let us consider a specific case let us forget about the horizontal tail now and let us consider a situation where you have only the wing so for example if you had only wing then at the zero lift condition cmcg would be cmac but do remember that cm0 is cmcg at alpha a equal to zero which you can see from this graph that cmcg is the value at cm0 because alpha a is zero here so in this case what would happen is that cm0 would be simply equal to cmac when lift is zero so that is the situation when only the wing is considered and the lift is zero so essentially you would not be able to get a positive cm0 here because remember that cmac is typically negative for a cambered airfoil so just to recapitulate if you again remember the graph of cm versus alpha a it goes something like this so in the case when lift is zero for example in the cl alpha a curve at this location you have this negative value of cmac so what this means is that for the camber type of airfoil where you have positive camber you would have a negative cmac and that is certainly not something which you want that would not be giving you the appropriate graph so this is a very important fact to remember is that when only the wing is considered cmac is negative for the cambered wing and this condition must be somehow be mitigated or ameliorated as the case may be so we do not want this cmac negative to essentially mess up the static stability of this particular aircraft so what is done is that we essentially bring in the horizontal tail so now we can answer the question why the horizontal tail is needed now because cm0 is negative if only wing is present you essentially have a moment which is acting like this so this is a typical wing with positive camber with zero lift and so you have a value like this which is negative so what happens is that the horizontal tail develops a lift in this direction which is a negative lift and so it really creates a 
moment in the positive direction and this has to counter this negative moment here so that your CMO value becomes positive or CM0 value becomes positive. So the primary function of the horizontal tail is to counter the negative CM0 of the cambered wing. Now one more way to do it is to have a horizontal tail in front and this is known as the canard. So in the case of canard you would have a positive lift, your CG would be here. You would have a negative lift coming from the pure wing but there would be a positive lift which is generated by the canard here. So that would be this force here into this distance or moment arm here and the canard would essentially do the same thing is that it would make CM0 positive. So these are the two ways which we can qualitatively see are used to essentially make the airplane statically stable in pitch. You can either put the horizontal tail here which gives a downward lift or you can put a canard which gives an upward lift and the aim of both these situations is that the negative moment which is present if only the wing is present is countered by these lifting surfaces in a manner such that CM0 becomes positive. Now the canard has some good points and bad points. One of the negative points is that the canard will create some flow deviations which will impact the wing here. So that has to be considered but the positive side is that you get a positive lift. So that contributes to the lift of the entire aircraft. In contrast here you have the wing which is in free flow here but there will be the wing flow which will impact this uh, tail here, the horizontal tail here but there is negative lift on this tail here. So this canard here should actually be the horizontal tail. So that's just a typo. So just to summarize the main thing from this lecture is that the very important CMCG by alpha A curve is there and the curve has this particular form or the line. The CM0 value should be positive. The slope of this line should be negative. So these are two things which guarantee static stability as far as the pitch or longitudinal stability motion is considered and do remember that the point where CMCG is zero that is corresponding to the trim point that is alpha A is equal to alpha E. Now if you look at most aircraft they typically have horizontal tail you will find that mostly in most of the commercial jets and so on but you will see certain aircraft with canards for example if you see the Dassault Rafale it has a canard and also the Saab Gripen and some of the Sukhoi fighters also. So you can search out in Google and it will lead you to various aircraft which have canard. So what you need to do is just search for aircraft with canard and that will give you a lot of information about the canards. By the way, if you are interested in vocabulary, canard also means a rumor, but I think what is being used here is some kind of French word. So check that out and if you find anything put it in the comment section below. So I'll end this video now in the next lecture I'm going to discuss the quantitative theory behind this. So we are going to do all the math. So I'll see you then.